<laughs> I don't know when we're ever going to talk about Kid Cash again. <laughs> but Kid Cash, that's just a name that just doesn't really get brought up very much. I always remember him as looking like the guy who sort of looked like Owen Hart in TNA. He had a bit of an Owen Hart yeah. face to me, but he was also an ECW original. So uh, any Kid Cash stories uh, that you have? Yeah, uh, Cash was... Uh, there's a, a handful of guys uh, through my tenure in the business that one being uh, Al Perez... And the other being Kid Cash <clears throat> had every tool. If, if there's such a thing as a great wrestler's toolbox, they had every single tool that should be in there. Uh, they had the body, they had the ability, they had the athleticism. <clears throat> they both, I think, Al a little more, but both had the personality to be grandiose over the top. Uh, and they also both seemed to understand position on the card you know, how to get a match over, uh, both of them, I think cash a little bit longer, but like Al Perez, when I came in as the young skinny kid in the dressing room, you just look down across the dressing room at him and think, man, he's, he's going to be the next big thing. Like that's the guy right there. And he's all of a sudden disappeared from the business. And two, two or three years ago, at WrestleCade, there's a gigantic room and, fans and tables and i i see this guy probably 10 yards down the on the opposite side of the aisle and every so often we catch each other's eyes and glance and i'm like damn who is that and i you know i know him and this goes on like for a couple hours and finally he comes walking there's a break and he comes walking over he gets like three steps out of his table I'm like holy shit it's al perez i jumped up and walk over and i said to him like he still looks great and everything i said dude like what what happened? Like you just disappeared. And he was one of those guys that gave himself like a five year plan. If, if in five years hadn't hit it, you know, it's time to move on. And uh and he stuck to that. And he's been successful since and you know, done some you know businesses and things. Uh and I, I told him I said, dude, like I <laughs> I was I, I just assumed like you're the next big thing in wrestling. Like he had every the body, that look, uh, you know, the athleticism. Um, he had all those things. Kid Cash had the same thing. That same toolbox was as complete with Kid Cash as it was with anybody. And for whatever reason, again, and there's, you know, when we talk about these types of things, you know, you'll see a been a thousand wrestlers that you've seen on TV between then, and you're scratching your ear going, like, okay, but this guy instead of that guy, um, you know, and, and you're hard to place it. It's hard for you to place it. Uh all I can, the only thing that I can give as, a, as an answer to that <clears throat> is ultimately beyond the toolbox, beyond the heart, beyond the desire. Because if you've gone to the trouble of putting that toolbox together and gone to the trouble of getting into that shape and gone to the trouble to work from this company to that company, nobody's endeavoring to say, okay, but at this point, I'm just going to walk away mm -hmm. um, or not quite get there. Everybody wants to be the world champion and that's ever owned a pair of boots. So what is it? And I think that the ultimate answer and it's not an answer, but it's, it's the best answer that I can come up with is there's just a whole lot of luck involved in this too. The right time, right place. You farted at the wrong time in a meeting. Mm -hmm. Those just weird things like that, that you stop and think, because I, when I look at those guys, and Bobby Roode, we talked about Bobby Roode a second ago. It confounds me that at this stage, Bobby Roode's not that guy you go, oh, yeah, man, how much money he drew and all the belts he's had and you know, top spot and all the companies. It's perplexing. It really, really is that you, that there are so many guys uh, that come and go like that. And, you know, like, what, in this humble way, you sort of like, have a tendency to compare yourself and, and, and you know, you're okay. Well, I'm good at this, but, but when you look at those guys, you go like, but they're good at this and this and this and this and this and this and that. And, uh, and for whatever reason, it just doesn't play out. Um, I think there's a whole lot of <clears throat> maybes, ifs and could have beens and all that stuff that goes into it, and a whole bunch of luck that go into it because there's no other way to explain how did Al Perez not become that big thing. How was kid cash, not an integral player uh, in those companies? 
in lots of other ways, Lance Storm, uh, you know, you go to these different people that you you've worked with and been around and see, and you can scratch your head and go like, I just don't on, on paper. There's everything. And yet something falls through with it. Um, and it's just one of those mysteries that I think keeps wrestling interesting, but it also keeps it perplexing to guys like me that study it and try to figure it out. And it's just, well, you know, what is it? Your, your Churchill said it's a mystery wrapped in a riddle surrounded by an enigma or some version of those three words. I I think that's the same thing here in wrestling. There is no formula that you can say, okay, James, do these 73 things like I did, and you're going to be a world champion and a big name. It's there's just a whole lot of X factor that goes in. Mm. Uh, it also might be that people like Lance Storm or someone more modern like Damien Sandow, uh, you know, are, are in the idol Stevens. I think for the most part, maybe they're too good, and therefore they're good at everything, and therefore if you're good at everything – you end up being a utility player to plug into mm. one space or another. So it could always be that as well, where basically, oh, oh. yeah, you can you, you can just be you can be fit into any hole because you're any shape peg kind of thing. Yeah, and, and you know if you go before a certain period, you know, like if you go say before the Hogan era, uh, if you were that good, you invariably were going to get pushed at some point. Mm. Now you may or may not draw when you're like look at uh. uh Give him names. Uh, Pedro Morales uh, becomes world champion with 72 and the houses go. And they couldn't get, they had blackballed Bruno right prior to that. And so senior basically had to go back. Would have never hired him back. If Pedro came in those houses, stayed full, you probably would have never seen a second run from, from Bruno. So, you know, again, those things going to, but by the Hogan era, much to your definition, uh, if you were a Jake Roberts, if you were a Roddy Piper, if you were a Paul Orndorff, if you were a Randy Savage, you're the foil to get this guy over. And I think we see more of that. I'm sure there's probably instances prior to that, but you see that becomes more the system, more the norm as to, okay, you can do everything. So that means you're like your point, the utility guy, go out there and get this guy over. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not sure if it, it seems to be my recollection to listen to Bruno and Dominic and all different people from that generation was that if you had the goods in the ring, you were probably going to get some kind of a push and some kind of run out of it. Um, and then ultimately, like if it, like like Pedro where the houses go down, then it's going to be a quick thing. But Pedro didn't disappear at that point. Pedro was kept you know, like in a different place, like mid card and earlier uh, with the Intercontinental title. Um, but we see much more of that later. And it's. Mm. It's it's still confounding because you look at those guys and you know uh, and it, and it just really makes you scratch your head because you I remember being that kid in the dressing room and looking at at Al Perez and they're like man this guy he's got everything he can do it all and yet you know here and gone. Mm -hmm.